Matthew chapter number 12, verse number 22, it says, Then one was brought to him, and I'm reading out of the New King James Version, Matthew 12, 22. Then one was brought to him who was demon-possessed, blind and mute, and he healed him so that the blind and the mute men both spoke and saw. And the multitudes were amazed and said, could this be the son of David? Now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, oh, this fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the spirit of God then surely the kingdom of God has come upon you wow. my God <laughs> or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house just say this to make the devil nervous tell him say I'm coming in your house <laughs> now go over to verse number 43 when an unclean spirit goes out of a man he goes through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. And then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goeth and taketh seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. Wow. He's talking about authority over devils. And he starts talking about how this exercise in authority over the enemy showed the fact that the kingdom of heaven had arrived on the earth. Which means wherever the kingdom is, there will be demonic exits. That they can't coexist. <laughs> if the kingdom comes in, Come on now. demons got to get out. Because there is a superior authority that has come on the scene. Yes. Then he goes on talking about you cannot spoil the goods of a strong man unless you first bind him and then if you bind him you can come in and take everything he has and then he ends by talking about another kind of demonic experience it is one when an unclean spirit goes out of a man walking through dry places seeking rest can't find it and says i'm going to go back to the house from which i came out of and when he comes he finds it empty, swept, and garnished. Put in order, everything is nice. The only problem is, ain't nobody in it. 
it looks habitable from the outside. But once you get inside, the spirit discovered there's nobody there. So then he goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked and they come in and the last state of the man is worse than the first. And then this is the phrase that got me. Jesus said, so shall it be to this wicked generation. It dawned on me that what he was talking about in this text is not just how demonic spirits deal with individuals, but also how demonic spirits operate in generations. How they take over generations. And so the command of God for us today is to take our generation back. Look at somebody and say, we're taking our generation back. This is the assignment that is on this house. This is why it is so apropos for me to be here today because you have been given the assignment to take nations and generations. So today I'm going to deal with this from a macro picture that we are not those that have the authority given by God Almighty for defensive purposes only. Yeah. Yeah. We are those that have been given this authority not to just stop the enemy from coming into our house, but also for us to invade his house. And spoil his goods. So prophetically, look at somebody and say, Today, over nations and generations, we take in back the house. Now lift up a shout and let hell know we're coming. Yeah, we're coming. We're coming. The Word of God declares something that the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and I never saw it like this until he revealed it to me a few days ago. He says, Isaac, would you please go and tell my church that when I came to the earth, I came for two purposes. I did not only come to save them from their sins. Now, absolutely he came. To save us from our sins. But that is not the only reason he came. For the Bible declares in 1 John 3 that for this purpose was the Son of God manifested in the earth that he might destroy the works of the devil. Yes. Yes. Which means Jesus didn't come into the earth just to save us. He also came into the earth to tear the devil's kingdom down. And the church, we must get to that duality of our mission. That you're not just on your way to heaven. You're here to wreck hell while you're on your way there. That we're not just in this earth realm to bring heaven down, but to cast hell down. Oh, I got the right people in here this morning. This is a call to Satan today to let him know he's got to go. 